Hi folks, Caroline here, and um, today I want to talk to you about digital detoxes. Now, um, I did this yesterday, and um, so I just wanted to speak about my experience and what I've learned from it, and why I did it. So, um, forgive me if I keep looking down, because I've actually made notes for this one, because there's a lot I wanted to, uh, to try and cover in this video. So, uh, what is a digital detox? Well, it's when, this is my interpretation of it, um, it's where you spend, say, a day um, where you disconnect from the outside world, you go off, off the grid um, and take away all those external influences um, like the news, social media um, and all that kind of stuff. Now, there's different levels to this. Um, I've spoken before about a silence day that I did last year um, and I didn't quite do it to the extremes. I mean, if you think of a silence day, like what Buddhist monks might do, um, where they uh, literally spend the day not talking to, the, to anybody, not talking to themselves and just sitting, spending the day in meditation. Now, um, I'm not that extreme. Um, so what I chose to do yesterday was just, as I say, go off grid for the day. So that meant turning my phone, um, turning the data off on my phone. I didn't actually go full airplane mode this time just because um, I applied for a job on Friday and I wanted to be able to uh, answer the phone if they did call back, but um, but nobody rang. Um, but yeah, so I turned off data on my phone. I just put my phone down, um, stuck it in a room somewhere and, uh, and didn't actually carry it around with me. Um, and I didn't turn on the news, I didn't turn on the TV, I didn't turn on the radio, I didn't turn on anything. Um, and the reason for this is to basically cut out all the noise um, and just spend some time with yourself. Um, now I live alone, so for me it was with myself, if you're at home, um, given the current situation, um, with family or with loved ones, um, you know, maybe it's something you can all do together and actually spend time with each other. But what I'm talking about specifically is spending time with myself so that I can hear myself and reconnect with myself. So why would you do something like this? Well, um, for one, it's a pattern interrupt. It's a change to your daily routine. And so by doing it, it helps bring awareness to the things that you do every day that you don't even realize you're doing. For me in particular, like just picking up my mobile phone all the time, you know, checking the time, checking my emails, checking social media, checking how many subscribers I've got that day. Um, um, things that don't bring me anything. And it's, I stop to ask myself, why do I do that? What's it serving in me? And it's basically the ego. It's serving the ego. The ego needs to feel um, wanted, needed, like something's happening. It just needs that stimulus. Um, why else do you do it? Um, to reconnect with yourself. So, because um, I believe that all the answers that we look for in life aren't out there. Somebody else isn't going to give us the answers that we're looking for because what we need is in here. And this is actually an opportunity to go inwards rather than outwards and actually ask yourself the questions and realize that you actually already have a lot of the answers that you're looking for. Um, and it also helps you to be more conscious and more aware of what you do, um, of how you spend your time in particular, um, and where it just disappears. Because we all say, oh, I haven't got time for this, I haven't got time for that, I'm too busy. Um, well, stop for a minute and just ask yourself, well, where is that time going? Because if you think about, you know, all the successful people in the world, the Richard Branson, the Elon Musk's, or whoever it is, you know, um, the Bill Gates's, they have the same 24 hours in their day as we have in ours. So how are they using their time? I don't want to get into that now, but that's just an example. Just being more conscious of how you spend your time. And also, it's an opportunity to just be more present. Be more mindful of what's going on in your immediate environment. Um, what's going on around you, of the hearing, you know, just activating your senses, um, you know, touch, taste, smell, sight, hearing, and just hearing the birds in the trees, hearing the wind outside, hearing the, the kids running around in the, in the garden next door and having fun, you know, just being aware of these things. And being more present, that's when we're really aware of what's going on right now in this moment. And when you're conscious of it, that's, that's the moments you remember because we spend so much of our time just whizzing through life, we just don't even notice what's, what's happening, what's going on, 
So it's about taking the time to stop and be present. Um, I also believe that it's important sometimes to slow down in order to speed up. So for me, I've been working so hard recently, you know, seven days a week almost. Um, even if I'm not working, my brain's still working, trying to figure out what I'm doing, where I'm going, what's next, what are my goals, what should I be, how should I be spending my time. Um, respond, talking to people, responding to people, connecting with people, especially at this, this current time when, uh, when the world's going a bit crazy right now, isn't it? Um, but that's another reason for disconnecting from the world is to just stop being influenced by all that external noise, all that, all the, 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 the stuff in social media at the moment, the stuff in the news, the, uh, which is you know, inducing people to panic because it's causing a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of uncertainty. And by just stopping for a day and being present, you can see that actually right now you're okay. You have a roof over your head, you have food in the cupboard, hopefully you've got toilet paper, enough at least for today. Um, you know, you've, you've got everything you need. You've got your health, hopefully. Um, and so it's helping by reducing that noise, it reduces that anxiety that is pervading us all right now. You know, there's this fear mongering of, of oh my God, what's gonna happen? Um, you know, not just physically, are we gonna die? You know, are we going to catch this thing and are we going to die? But, you know, what's going to happen if we're going to be cooped up in a house with, with our families, you know, with our, our husband or wife or, you know, our children for extended periods of time? Um, how are we going to cope? Um, I could, that's a whole other topic I want to get onto another day, but um, I won't do that now. But um, the other reason, I think, for, for doing a digital detox is it's a form of self-love, which I think is really, really important right now given the current circumstances. Because um, it allows you to refill your cup so that and re-energize yourself so that you've got that energy then to then give to others and to help others. So um, yeah, so that's why I think it's, it's, it's important. It's a good exercise to do. Now, how did it go for me yesterday? Well, um, I won't say it was easy because as I say, I've got a lot of pressure in my head at the moment that I need to do stuff, I need to sort stuff out, I need to make plans, I need to work out what I'm doing so that I feel safe and secure and in control of my life because there's, there's a lot of uncertainty in my own life right now, you know, forget coronavirus. Um, but what I ended up doing, well, first of all, I wanted to try and fix my motorbike tire, which is something I've been wanting to do for six months. Um, but when I went to find the tools to do it, I couldn't find them. So anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure of myself what I've taken them back to the Netherlands with him or hidden them somewhere, but anyway. But I, I ended up having a spring clean. So I ended up doing some, some tidying and some organising and getting rid of a load of stuff in the, de the desk upstairs. I decluttered, I, I threw out a lot of things that we don't need and managed to clear a drawer. So I've now got space to put more things away in a drawer rather than leaving them out on surfaces and, and give things a proper home. And so I had a bit of a spring clean. And then the weather was so nice, I thought I've got to be outside. So um, I've been looking at the garden. So I went and spent a good few hours out weeding the garden preparing it for uh, um, for when, you know, uh, spring and summer really hit and the garden goes crazy, which I know it will do. So I took the opportunity to get a lot of the weeds out and uh, um, re uh, in readiness for that, which is something, again, I've been wanting to do for ages, but I've never had the time, is what I tell myself. Um, and then it was still a lovely evening, so I, I went out for a late afternoon walk, um, round, just did my, my, my river walk, and I was amazed at how many people were out, actually. You know, given this this whole you know, lockdown, social distancing, whatever it is we're supposed to be doing right now, um, it was great to see so many just couples going out for a walk, walking the dog um, along by the river. And unfortunately, we've got massive field next to the river, so we can we can all be out and not be close to each other. Although, why is it that we <laughs> every time I met somebody, it was always when we had to both go through a gate, for example, which was a bit fun. Um, but um, um, and then I was like, well, what am I going to do with the evening? You know. If I'm, if I'm going to sit on the computer and I can't watch TV, all I would really be fancy doing was just sitting back and watching a film. But I said, no, Caroline, let's, let's think differently about this. And uh, I thought, oh, I could have a bath. You know, I've been working hard in the garden, you know, I'm a bit achy. I could just uh, pamper myself with a bath. And so I did, I ran a bubble bath and sat at a nice soak and a nice, um, um, oh God, what's it called? Um, when you rub stuff on you, um, Oh, well, I've lost the word, but you know what I mean? Rubbing salts and stuff into your skin to uh, to remove the dead skin cells and all that kind of stuff. 
completely lost the word. Um, but I did that and then I got out of the bath and put loads of lovely creams and nice smelling, you know, sort of stuff all over me and I just felt wonderful. And then I was like, what are we gonna have for dinner? And rather than just falling into habit of like, you know, just cooking the usual stuff, I was like, what do I actually want? And, um, and I cooked myself a nice dinner. Um, and then I spent the evening reading a book. I just, I picked a nice fun book, there's plenty of books in this house. So I just picked a nice, picked a nice fun book off the shelf and just sat down and probably spent about three or four hours um, of the evening just sitting in the lounge, you know, um, reading a book. And uh, it felt wonderful. Um, it was, it's difficult though for me to do this because there's guilt. And I don't know if you feel this too, but there's guilt in, it feels like being selfish. And it feels like, when I feel that I've got all this pressure, as I say, on myself to be doing stuff, to, to stop doing and just be, it takes, that actually took quite a lot of, of willpower to allow myself that time um, to just, just do the things that I enjoy. But I tell you what, I learned a lot of things from the experience when I woke up this morning. I actually had the best night's sleep I've had in ages. I got to bed earlier than, than normal. Um, and uh, woke up at half past eight this morning, and um, made and I was desperate not to get sucked back into normal life. So uh, the first thing I did wasn't to pick up my phone and check my my phone for emails or messages or so on. Um, I thought, no, I'm going to take take control of the day before it controls me. Um, and um, so, yeah, I. Uh, I decided I wanted to record this video first before I get sucked into the rest of the day. And also to make sure I plan my day um, before I get sucked into what, you know, what other people want from me. Because I know there's, there's been some, like, you know, I saw, I've tried not to look at them, but I saw a bunch of messages that have come through in the last 24 hours from friends, family, which I will respond to. But I'm gonna respond to it on my timetable. I'm not, I'm gonna respond mindfully and not react um, because it's my life and it's my day and I need to look after myself and my needs first and work out what is important to me to be able to achieve my goals and meet my needs. And then from that place, then I will be free and able to help others. Because if you start helping others before you're ready or you know, if you empty your cup, you've got nothing to give to other people or you're, you're giving to other people and it's, it's draining your cup, um, and that can cause resentment and it can cause resistance and you feel like you're doing all this good in the world for other people but it's actually taking away from you and so if you take control of yourself first it's, it's as um, my, my good friend Alex Eastman said it's about being selflessly selfish so it's it's I know we attach a lot of I say guilt and shame to, to being selfish but we're actually by looking after ourselves first we're then able to better help and better serve other people and also once we've got our ego in check, then it's, we're not serving other people for our own you know, gain or our own, you know, pat ourselves on the back, aren't we good, we've done good. We're doing it because we genuinely want to and it's coming from the right place, the place with the, with the right intentions. So um, yeah, and so it's reminded me as well that about that controlling the day because I, I've been in the habits recently and I've been aware of, I'm doing it, but I couldn't seem to break it of you know, waking up in the morning struggling to, come to and get out of bed and you know reaching for my phone just sitting there and browsing social media for a while while I'm kind of like waking up or coming to and that's half an hour 45 minutes sometimes even an hour gone in the morning um of just soaking stuff up from the external world um and that's not moving me forward and it's not healthy you know especially not first thing in the morning I'd rather get up have my shower meditate first while I'm still in my own little world from my dream state and so on and, and balance and centre myself first and work out what's important, plan my day first so what I want to get done today before I let the external world come in and then and influence me or try and, and you know, to swing me off course. Because um, that's something else I've been very conscious of now as a result of this detox, become aware is that I've been, I've been, rather than being, um, like, uh, what's a good analogy, like a tree, imagine a branch on a tree, you know, growing towards the sunlight. I've been like a leaf and I've been blowing with the wind and going in this direction, going in that direction, rather than sticking to that path of following the sunlight, regardless of when the wind is coming and trying to blow me off course. And so it's reminded me that I need to get back into, right, where am I going? Um, and staying strong and staying true to my path 
because I know that path is going to take me to a place where I can serve other people from the right place um, and do, do the most good in the world that I can do. So, um, yeah, I feel, I feel recharged, I feel re-energised and I feel refocused as a result of just spending 24 hours just by myself with my own thoughts and um, looking after myself. So um, I hope that's given you a bit of, of inspiration there, folks, and um, and maybe an opportunity that, well, you know, if you are, I don't want to say stuck at home because I don't think it is, it is being stuck, you know, being self-isolated or, or for, you know, being at home for, for many more hours in the day than we're used to. I think it's an opportunity and, and maybe this is a way that you can use that time to, to good effect, to, uh, to get more energy and to refocus yourself on what's important to you and what you can do proactively during this time to keep moving towards your goals and not let the external influences of the world, you know, like coronavirus and like the impact it's having on everybody, and not let that steer you too far off course. So, um, yeah, I hope that's um, given a few tips and ideas, folks. Um, if you've got any questions, drop me a comment, send me an email, find me on Facebook, whatever. Uh, find a way to contact me. And um, if I can give you any help or practical advice, do let me know. All right, enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Stay safe, wash your hands. And um, I hope to see you in the next video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.